Glory to God. We rejoice in the God of our salvation. We rejoice in you. We rejoice in your word. We rejoice in your spirit. Oh, we thank you, Father. Just begin to thank him for all the good things that you've received over the holidays. Amen. Even if you just got one gift, maybe it was a little one, that means God was thinking of you. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. We thank you for every good and perfect gift that comes down from the Father of lights. We bless you, Lord. We magnify you. We lift our affections to you. Lord, help us to be more God conscious. <laughs> big, big God, and we love you, and we worship you. We worship you. We worship you in spirit and in truth. Our desire is to honor you tonight. Honor you each and every day that we wake up, Father. We love you. Teach us your ways tonight. to think on him. You're such a big God and we love you. We love you, we love you, we love you, Lord. Hmm. Oh, we bless you, Jesus. Amen. With us, our God is with us. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. Oh, we man you will. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. Come closer. at the 
Jesus you supply and you're here with wonder working power everything you breathe on coming back to life at the mansion Just the whisper of your name was silence, wind, and waves at the mention of your name. At the mention of your name, every chain will break. I know everything will change. Just the whisper of your name was silence, wind, and waves at the mention of your name. And you're here, you're the provider, all I've ever needed, Jesus, you supply. We speak your name, Jesus. We speak your name, Jesus. No other name like Jesus. Come on, just speak it over your life, speak it over your situations, whatever your circumstances, or just speak the name of Jesus.
Jesus mm -hmm. Oh Jesus Ooh. We speak the name and darkness has to flee Jesus We speak your name and sickness has to bow Jesus, we speak your name and fear runs away, Jesus. Oh, by your name, depression lives, Jesus. Hope is in your name, Jesus. At the mansion. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We exalt you in this place. We exalt you as our Savior. You are our Savior. You are our Creator. We worship you. We exalt you. you in this place, Father. Hallelujah. We exalt you and we're so grateful. We're so grateful. Hallelujah. Mm, magnify the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. Mm. Hallelujah. Father, we make room for you in our lives. We make room for you. Hallelujah. We make room for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Just pray in the Spirit. Hallelujah. As we begin the first service of 2018. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Paul said, I'll worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the Spirit. I'll pray in the Spirit. Hallelujah. I'll pray with my understanding. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, we worship you. We worship you. We praise you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Father. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you for refreshing in this place. Thank you for refreshing every heart tonight. Hallelujah. Every heart that's here, every heart that's watching by way of internet, thank you for a refreshing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for a refreshing. Oh, refreshing. Refreshing. Hallelujah. Declare your peace in this place. I declare your peace over every family. I declare your peace. Hallelujah. I prophesy your peace to surround every heart in this place. Hallelujah. I thank you. Hallelujah. That your spirit is a quickening force. Hallelujah. Thank you that your word is a quickening force. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 We praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your peace, your presence, your presence. Hallelujah. Give him praise in this place. Amen. Hallelujah for his goodness. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, before you see it, I want you to greet one another and welcome them to Heritage of Faith. How good is to see them tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. So good to see you tonight on the first Wednesday of 2018. Amen. Amen. So were you here Sunday morning? <laughs> Some of you might have been. <laughs> uh, how many watched the Sunday morning online? Amen. Amen. I had a number of people that watched and and uh, but um, but we had a, had a good time. We had about sixty people that ended up still coming. But um, but it was a great time and a lot of feedback. Good feedback online. Had a lot of people that watched and everything. And so if you were able to tune in, and you know, I was glad you I'm glad you had the opportunity, even though with the weather the way it was, that we still got to uh, you know for for God to speak to and speak to us and minister to us. Amen. Hallelujah. You doing you doing okay, Rochelle? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I, I talked to Vic, and he was heading to Dallas, and he was praying for his cousin 
Amen. I got a report. So, Father, we just lift up Vic and his cousin to you right now, Father. And I just thank you for your hand upon his cousin ministering grace and peace. Thank you for your hand on Vic as he is ministering to them, as ministered to them. I just thank you for restoration, restoration. Thank you, Father, restoration. Thank you for the work of the Holy Spirit working. Hallelujah, Lord. I, I just lift up Heather to you, Father, and I just speak life and strength and healing over her right now. Thank you, Father, for anyone else in our congregation, Father, that is overcoming. We speak for life and peace over them. Thank you for your anointing ministering to them. Thank you for the power of God quickening their lives. Hallelujah, right where they are. Thank you for healing. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Before we get in the Word, let's go ahead and receive our tithes and offerings. If you need an offering envelope, there's one in the seat back in front of you. Uh, other, you can text to give or you can give by uh, way of credit card uh, on, on the envelopes as well. If you're watching by way, way of internet, you can follow the give prompts. But as, as you prepare to give, recognize and understand God's faithfulness. God's faithfulness. God's faithfulness. You know, I love what the psalmist says in, in, in uh, I believe it's Psalms 37, I believe it is, or Psalms 34, one of the two. It says, he's just talking about feeding on his faithfulness. You know, that, that's, uh, I love that, that feeding on his faithfulness. What does that mean, feeding on? Meditating on. Meditating on his faithfulness. Oftentimes we spend so much time meditating when it comes to our finances, maybe our lack or the bills we have to pay, or what's not working, or what, um, you know, about harvest, that we, we, need to, we need to center our faith on the one that's faithful. Because, you know, the law of seed time and harvest is God's law, not my law. It's a law that he established in the earth. And so instead of, instead of meditating on what you don't have financially or, or how is 2018 going to look for you financially, well, according to the prophetic word, it's days of abounding, days of flourishing, amen, days of glory. So, so, so don't, don't focus on the aspect of what you don't have. Focus on God's faithfulness, faithfulness to his word. You know, I love this. The statement came out of, and it may have been some, another ministry, but you know, I guess I first got acquainted with it with with the Copeland's ministry. Is one word from God will change your life for, for forever. You know, that's that's one word from here. One one bit of revelation has the ability to set the course of your life on a whole new direction, on a whole, one, one word from God. There's times that I would read God's word and all of a sudden when that word became revelation, all of a sudden my life started to change because now it wasn't just a word I read, but now it was a word that I was putting into practice in my life. But take it even beyond just even this word. I'm not talking about being outside of God's word, but I'm talking about one word from God on walk into this business. One word from God, so into that ministry. One word from God, talk to that person over there. One word from God, invest into that company. One word from God. You know, it's just one word from God. One, one, one aspect of wisdom can totally set the course of your life and your finances in a whole nother direction. So don't try to come up with the idea of, well, how is God going to do? It's not up to you to figure out how God's going to do. It's up to you to understand his faithfulness and for you to align your faithfulness with his faithfulness. Align your faith with his faith. And, you know, it, it's, you, you never know, and, and, and you, you, may, you may receive a negative report or, or a, a, pertaining to a job. Don't, don't, don't meditate on, okay, how am I going to get on the other side of this? No, no, just understand, okay, God's got you. He's going to make a way in this situation. Now, what we have to do is when he tells us that word, it's up to us to follow through with what he's telling us to do. Amen. Amen. 
You never know. Don't, don't limit God in, your finan- in the financial realm by how he's worked in the past or, or how you've been doing things in the past with your business. It, it could be a whole nother aspect of business, a whole nother aspect. So don't get your eyes on, on this one stream or this one way. He has many ways. He has many aspects of things. You know, and I love what Corinthians says. It says, you know, he talks about, uh, uh, you know, religion has said, you know, well, you, you know, never know what God's going to do. You know, it, 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 he says, you know, it's not by, you know, not by our, our mind or, or you know, it, it, nor, nor to enter into the heart of man. Uh, you know, our eye hadn't seen it. You see, our eye hadn't seen it. But no, it says, but it reveals to us by his spirit. Amen. He's not keeping anything from us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, Father, as we give tonight, I thank you, Father, that we feed on your faithfulness. As we sow our offerings tonight and sow our, our, our financial gift tonight and, and seed tonight, as, as we're being obedient, Lord, I thank you, Lord, we feed on your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. Hallelujah. And according to your word, you do not lie. You're always faithful. You always keep covenant. And you don't change. So we release our offering tonight in good hands. Hallelujah. Multiply it. Increase the kingdom with it. Hallelujah. We thank you for being our provider. In Jesus' name, amen. Ushers, you and receive the offering. While they're doing that, just a couple announcements I want to remind you of. Uh, don't forget, for all, all the men, tomorrow night, uh, 7 o'clock over in, the, in our uh, youth facility, uh, Next Level Men's Meeting. Uh, it's our first one of the year. And my theme, last year our theme for the whole year was uh, making of a champion. And in this year, we'll be talking about breaking the mold. That's going to be that's going to be our topic this year: breaking the mold. Amen. I don't want to live my life measured upon a natural standard. I don't want the men of our church to to be um, and and try to shoot for just a natural standard. I believe God's standards far exceed natural standards, and I believe there's a whole nother level of living. As for, for men of this church oh, that God wants us to step into as, as, as a team of men this year. And so encourage all the men, uh, come on out tomorrow night. Also, uh, make sure you invite somebody, somebody you work with. Encourage uh, to you to bring some people. And, uh, and I believe um, they'll, they'll be encouraged by the, the fellowship, the relationship, and also by the word. Uh, also, don't forget about uh, Sunday night will be our, our first worship night of the year. And so I encourage you to, to come out to worship night, 6 o'clock on Sunday evening, and, uh, and we'll have a great time as, you know, it's different every time we come together, um, but I believe um, God will have something specific. The Holy Spirit will manifest in extraordinary ways and encourage you to be a part of visitation this coming Sunday night. Amen. You ready to get in the Word? Yeah. Hallelujah. We've been talking about hearing God, and we're going we're gonna to stay on this, um, you know, at least the rest of this month. Uh, and then we'll be transitioning to other, other things and we'll communicate more about, about that. Uh, but if you're Bible, let's turn to uh, John chapter 10. John chapter 10. You know, as we approach the word, let's agree with it. Uh, let's agree with the word. Let, let the word be something you agree with. And what, what do I mean by agree with? That you have, with, when the word says something about your life, you say, so be it. That's, it, that, that's what I'm going to do. That's mine. That's how I'm going to live. And, 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 and the great thing about it is you don't have to feel it. You don't have to feel like you know, well, I don't really feel that right now. It doesn't matter about what you feel. It's about what does God's word say? Because if I just consulted the word, whether it's true or not, based on I'm feeling it, <laughs> then you know what? There's a lot of things I probably wouldn't have done in life. Things I wouldn't have done. I wouldn't be standing up here before you tonight. Amen. I wouldn't be in ministry if I based on what I felt. But it's based on what does God's word say? And so we've been talking about hearing God, and, and, and let's look at this in, in John chapter 10. 
John chapter 10, verse 3, says, The watchman, the watchman opens the door for this man, and the sheep listen to his voice and heed it. And he calls his own sheep by name and brings them out. Hallelujah. For this man and the sheep listen to his voice and heed it, and he calls his own sheep by name and brings them out. So I talk about believing and agreeing with the word. Here it says that he calls his sheep by name. He calls his, are you, are you his sheep? He calls you by name. He knows your name. Say that. Say, so my father knows my name. Verse 4 says, when he has brought his own sheep outside, he walks them before them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. Hallelujah. I want you to say with me, I, I believe that the Father knows my name. He's my Father. He's my shepherd. And I hear his voice. I hear the voice. Of the good shepherd. And I follow his voice. Amen. Don't ever say out of your mouth that you don't hear from God. Don't ever that, let that come out of your mouth. Well, I can't hear from God. God never speaks to me. I never hear his voice. Well, the heavens always seem to be closed to me. I don't think God hears me. Don't ever let these, these words come out of your mouth. Why? No, why? Because you're not agreeing with the word. The word says that he knows my name, and it also says that I hear his voice. Hallelujah. Maybe if you have the idea or the understanding that you don't hear his voice, maybe you need to start saying, I hear my father's voice, and I hear it always. I always hear the Father's voice. Change, change what you're saying. Change what you're thinking about your life. Change what you're saying. I hear the Father's voice. My Father directs me. I hear the voice of the Good Shepherd. I hear His voice all the time. He speaks to me on the job. He speaks to me when I'm in the car. He speaks to me when I read His Word. He speaks to me when I'm in church. He speaks to me on my way home from church. Start seeing things and believing things different. Amen. Say, I always, I always hear His voice. Hear his voice. Hallelujah. 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 Now, Wednesday night, you know, it's kind of like Bible school, you know, and, and I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be doing some teaching tonight and, and just lay, laying some things that I believe, you know, and there's a phrase that I use in Africa, and I, I probably used it here, and, and I, I kept using this phrase, living from the inside out. Living from the inside out. You, you, you are a spiritual being. You are a spirit. You have a soul when you live in a body. But see, too often, we judge our lives based on what we think up here instead of what God's speaking to us in here. You see, so Psalms 32 verse 8 says, He wants to lead you in the way that you should go. He wants to lead you. He wants to lead you in the way that you should go. And it says, He will instruct you and counsel you with His eye upon you. So you have to understand when we talk about hearing God's voice and you take Psalms 32, he wants to lead you in the way that you should go. If we keep reading John chapter 10, it talks about how he's the good shepherd and it says that we come, come in and we go out freely and it says we find pasture. What is pasture? It means abundance. It means what we need. It means strength. It means, it, it means that you have something there. You go in and out to get what you need. So, so when we talk about hearing his voice and him being our shepherd, it's for us to be able to go in and out freely to get from him exactly what we need. He wants to lead you. That's what a shepherd does. He leads sheep. You know, and how does a shepherd lead his sheep? He leads him by his voice. 
You know, Annette, Annette is going to be uh, doing different things when they go out to the Johnson County Crisis Center. And there's a book that she read years ago, and it's about the, a life story of a shepherd. And, and, it's, and it's how a shepherd uh, expounded on Psalms 23. And it's amazing how they follow the good shepherd. And it's based on his voice. The, the good shepherd doesn't beat the sheep to get them to go in the right direction. He directs them. He leads them. Hallelujah. See, he wants to lead us, but how is he going to lead us? He's going to lead us by his voice. Now, I don't have time, you know, in later time, we can talk about different ways he leads us. We, we know the primary way that Kenneth Hagin taught, taught was the inward witness. The inward witness. The still small voice, right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can also call it, I like to call it a, an impression. Hallelujah. Go to Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15. Oh, Holy Spirit, help me deliver this. Hallelujah. For us to see things in the Word, for us to grow in the Word. Pull on me tonight, all right? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Like what Keith Moore talks about. He goes, he goes uh, a lot of times the, the person preaching and what's being preached has just as much to do on the people receiving as it does the one that's ministering. Amen. Remember the woman with the issue of blood? What, she went and she touched Jesus. And, and he said, I sense virtue came out of me. So, so what the woman received had nothing to do with what Jesus was giving. It had everything to do with what the woman was pulling. Right? And so don't come to church and just say, oh, well, I hope that, that minister gives me a word I need. No, you, you need to come in faith, receive, believing and pulling on what, what the, the minister. Because you know what? I, I want you to pull on me because you know what? I want to say things that I don't even know. <laughs> Amen. I, I want to preach things that, that, that are new to me. So I have to stop and write. I need to write that down. I've never heard this before. But you know what? That's going to be dependent not on, you know, I'm, I'm going to prepare. But you know what? You, you need to pull. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You ready? You ready, Dolores? So we know we, he wants us to hear his voice. And we know he, he wants us to hear his voice. Why? So he can lead us. Lead us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Now, before I read this, I, I, I want to bring this out. Because as I got studying this... <clears throat> Because I would see things in here and then I would connect to other scriptures that really speak contrary to what I was seeing here. And I'm going, okay, Lord, I need some help with this based on words. And there's a word that I, I want to I talk about just for a moment before I read this to kind of set this up. And there's a word, the word seems. You know, there's, there's a scripture in Proverbs 14, verse 12, I believe it is. It says, there's a way that seems right into a man, but the end there is destruction. There's a way that seems right to a man. You know, you know I don't want to go after what seems right or looks right. I want the way that is right, you know. Because, because the way that seems right is destruction. So, so I'm getting here, and we'll, we'll talk about these in a minute. There's the word seems is used a couple of times here. And, and I'm kind of like, okay, well, I thought you said there's a way that seems right over here in Proverbs, and it leads to destruction. But according to them, they did what seemed, seemed right, and it was, it was okay. So, so I'm going, you know, as a teacher, my mind's like, okay, Lord, I need to know what, what is the difference here and, and how I teach this or how I approach this and even how I'm hearing you or how you're leading me. Because I, I, don't, I don't want to do just what seems right. Because you know what? Justin has done things that seem right. And you know what? It did not work out too well. Right? Are you with me, Danny? Am I the only, you and me the only ones? You know, uh, you know it, it seemed right. It, it looked good. You know, and so, so I got looking at this word seems in, in Proverbs and it... If you connect it, it's two different words. And part of one of the words actually is, for the word seems there is the word convenient. Another word is straight. Another word is smooth. And another word is prosperous. 
And so here in Proverbs, when it talks about there's a way that seems right, it has to do with outward appearances. It's not based on what you think in here, but it's ba- you're solely basing your decisions on what it looks like in the natural. It's outward evidence. You know, we can, if you want to equate this to a scripture in the Old Testament, this would be equivalent to when Abraham and Lot are, are looking at which direction they're going to go. And Abraham says, well, I'm going to, Lot, I'm going to give you, you, I'll let you pick first. And what did Lot choose? Lot chose all the good looking land. He chose everything that looked good. But you know what? There was Sodom and Gomorrah in that land, right? You know what eventually, you know. His wife turned to salt, you know, and so, so, so you, you can't base things on appearance. It, it looked good. It looked prosperous. It looked, well, it, it looked straight. So a lot of times we, we, we aren't to base our decisions in life just because it looks good or because, well, it looks like it, 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 it looks like it's the, pro- it looks smooth. There's no, there's no, there, there's, you know, cause I can see all the way to the end. But you know what, following God, you know, me being where I'm at, I'm not where I'm at because I could see all the way to the end. Because there was some things that I say, God said, goes this direction. And all of a sudden there's a turn coming. <laughs> you know what? I can't see that where, where I'm headed, but, but the Lord said, okay, go this way, go this direction. So there, there's a way that seems right to a man, but it, but the end is destruction. Hallelujah. Now, now the word seems here in the book of Acts. So let me, let's read some scripture here. Starting in verse 22. It says, Then pleased it the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with, Barna, with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, surnamed Barsabbas, and Silas, chief men among the brethren. So it pleased the apostles and the elders. It pleased. Verse 23. And they wrote letters by them after this manner. The apostles and the elders and brethren send greeting unto the brethren which are in the Gentiles in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia. For as much as we have heard that certain, meaning certain men, which went out from us have troubled you with words subverting your soul, saying, you must be circumcised and keep the law to whom we gave no, no such commandment. Verse 25, it seemed good unto us being assembled with one accord to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul. It seemed good to us. Now, the word seemed here means something that has been revealed to the heart. It's not, something, it's not something that's been based on outward appearances, but it's something that bore witness with their heart. It was, a, it was an impression. It was something, in, my heart, their heart was impressed, okay? You know what? There's some things going on out there. You know what? You know what? It pleased us as apostles. It pleased us, good to their heart, to send men to you with these letters, Okay? Verse 26, men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we have sent therefore Judas and Silas, who shall also tell you the same things by mouth, for it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things. So here we see too, it seemed good to us which means it, it was revealed, it was impressed on our heart that we needed to send some of these leaders, these chief leaders to you to, to direct your path, to direct, your, 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 to, to, to direct the church. Then he goes on, and it seems good to us and it seems good to the Holy Ghost. See, I like it when it's good to the Holy Ghost, when, when it's been what revealed to the heart by the Holy Spirit. I mean, there was an impression that came in their hearts. But you know what? It's just an impression. Hallelujah. Then it tells them what, what for the, verse 29, what tells them what, uh, what for them to tell them. Verse 30. So when they were dismissed, they came to Antioch. So when Paul, Barnabas, Silas, and Judas, when they were dismissed, they came to Antioch. 
So it, it, it seemed good to them. Now just stay with me here. It seemed good to the elders here. It pleased them to send these four men to Antioch to encourage the church of Antioch, right? It seemed good to them. They it had an impression. And when they had gathered the multitude together, they delivered the epistle, the letter, which when they had read it, they rejoiced for the exhortation. And King James says consolation, but this means exhortation. And Judas and Silas, being prophets also themselves, exhorted the brethren with many words and confirmed them. And confirm them. See, this was the Holy Spirit at work in the early church, and He sends them out to go and build up another body. But they just had, it's just, this is what we need to do. They're just impressed. And when they get there, Paul and Silas, or, or Silas and Judas, exhort them beyond just that letter. Now, verse 33, and, 33, and after they had tarried there a space, they were let go in peace from the brethren unto the apostles. Notwithstanding, it pleased Silas. King James says, pleased Silas to abide there still. So here they release Judas and Silas, Paul and Barnabas. But Silas, it says it pleased him to stay there. I mean, what happened? He was like, all right, I'm, I'm not, I got an impression. I'm not supposed to leave yet. It pleased, you know, you're, you're letting us go. Judas went back, but you know what? I, I got this impression. I need to stay. I need to stay. But you know what? A lot of times when you follow impressions, you might not know why you're doing it. You might really know the reason. You know what? I'm, you know what? I'm just, okay. Verse 35, Paul also and Barnabas continue. So Paul and Barnabas stayed. Teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others also. Now, if you look at verse 36 through 39, we see a disagreement between Paul and Barnabas. Now, let's look at verse 40. And Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. And he went through Syria, Cilicia, confirming the churches. Silas may not have known why he was staying. He just had an impression, you know what, I need to stay. See, he didn't know why. But later on we know why. Because Paul needed someone else. Amen. And if he just went back because everyone else went back, he'd been out of position. You see, impressions. It's just, it's that, it just seems, you know, I, you know what, I, I really need to, I think I need, I need to stay home today. I need, I, need, I, I shouldn't, or go this direction. I, I remember years ago when I first moved here, I was about to go out, and back then they had these things called 30 Days of Glory. And this was in 1999, and it was out at EMIC. And I just moved here. I'd just gotten here. It was the first part of September. And, and I remember I'd gone to the first, like two, two, night, two days in a row, all the meetings, all day long. Uh, they had all morning, afternoon, and night services. And, and I remember it was like the third, the third day. Um, I'm, a, I'm going to get in the car, and the Lord says, I don't want you going. I'm like, get behind me, Satan. <laughs> Get behind me, say, no, I'm going, I'm going to hear the word. I'm going to hear the word. And I said, no, I, I, just stay here. Just stay here. I said, no, I got, I got to hear the word. I'm, I need to hear the word. I just said, this, this, just stay here. I, I got to the car. I get, I get in the car. I start the car. I back up out of the driveway. I, I, I get on, I get on, they lived off of, uh, off of McCart. And, and so I pulled on, I pulled on, onto McCart heading north to hit 20. And, uh, and I'm like, I'm going, and, I just turn around, turn around. Okay. So I turned around, went in and sitting there and sitting in the house. Okay, what do you want to do? So I went, well, you know, I ordered a pizza. <laughs> I, I, I don't, you know, but my thing is, it's not up to me to figure out what, 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 what I, I, it's not up to me to figure out, I just had to follow the impression. It wasn't me being, you know, I'm just not, it had nothing to do with me being lazy or anything. I just want to stay home. No, it was like this impression. You know, uh, even when, 
You know, some of you heard, heard the story when I moved out here. The Lord said, said you, you, you're going to be in Texas for the majority of the rest of your life. I, I heard directly from the Lord about that. I get out here and I knew I was, it was going to be, I was coming to Jerry Savelle Ministry School of World Evangelism. So because of that, in my mind, I had this impression to come to the school and this whole aspect of, you know what, I guess if it's School of World Evangelism, I guess I'm going to be world evangelist. You know, I guess I'm going on the mission field. And so I had made up in my mind all these things where I had an impression to be here. But because I had an impression to be here, I like to figure the rest of it out. It's an impression. Well, the Lord told me to come here. Then it was an impression of, uh, look at it this way. When I finished my second year of school, I had this impression that, you know what, I'm supposed to be working in this building right here. This impression. And so, therefore, I, I think, okay, well, this is where I'm supposed to be. Well, when I finished Bible school, there wasn't any jobs here in this building. Well, there was a job at that building over there in production. And so I was like, no, Lord, you told me that this is supposed to be here. No, he, and he goes, he goes, I told you to serve here. And so my mind's trying to figure everything out when I just need to be following the impression. You know, I'm telling everyone I'm going to the mission field. What? The Lord said, no, you come to Bible school. And I'm, trying to, I'm, I'm trying to prophesy to everyone else what God's called me to do when he just said the first thing was, this is where you're supposed to be. See, an impression isn't a prophecy. So, so if you have an impression, don't try to figure it all out. Just follow the impression. Just follow the impression. Because the thing is, is when we, you try to figure out the impression and you try to figure out the whole story, that's when you make a mistake. That's when you get off. That's when you try to write the rest of the story. Amen. Amen. I am teaching right now, right? You know, impression. And so, so Silas had this in, impression, I just need to stay here. He didn't know why. I mean, why didn't he, did he, he, he go back with his homeboy? I mean, I, I imagine even he, imagine his, his partner kind of got upset. I traveled here with him and I've got to go home by myself. Silas didn't, didn't know exactly what was going to happen. I just needed, I think I need to stay here. I think I need to stay here. Impressions. Hallelujah. Let me get back to my notes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Yeah, there was a, you can't get an impression by the Spirit and add to it. Don't add what God's not adding. Don't add to what God said. Amen. Don't add to what God said. Don't add what he taught. See, I was, I was big at that because why? I wanted to try to figure it out. Hallelujah. Go to Acts 21. Acts 21. Show another example of this. And this is really an example of trying to, trying to figure it out. You can have an impression... You can have, even have the impression of it being a negative situation, but yet, because of it, you give someone wrong information. For example, Acts 21, hallelujah, verse 5. And finding disciples, who are these? Disciples, right? And finding disciples, we tarried there seven days, who said to Paul through the Spirit, that he should not go up to Jerusalem. Now these are disciples. Get it? Th these are disciples. They were there for seven days and they said to Paul, they said through the Spirit that, they should not go, that he should not go up to Jerusalem. Wait a minute. See, they had an impression. But just because they had an impression didn't mean they were the ones to tell Paul what to do. You see, Paul knew from the very beginning, even when he was, when they prophesied, when, when he had the experience with God and, uh, and uh, Ananias came to him, and we'll get to this towards the end, it, that, that he knew that he was going to have to suffer for his namesake. He, they knew there was going to be some things that were going to happen in his life that were going to be necessarily not the easiest route to go. 
And so they had this impression that, you know what, by the Spirit, that, you know what, Paul, you don't need to be going to Jerusalem. You don't need to be going to Jerusalem. Now let's go down to verse, thank you, Father. Just look at verse 5. And, and when we had accomplished those days, we departed and went our way. And they all brought us on our way with wives and children till we were out of the city. And we kneeled down on the shore and prayed. And when we had taken our leave one of another, we took ship and they returned home again. And when we had finished our course from Tyre, we came to Apotolomaeus and saluted the brethren. And we abode with them one day. And the next day, we that were of Paul's company departed. And came into Caesarea, and we entered into the house of Philip the evangelist, which was one of the seven, and bowed with him. And the same man had four daughters, virgins, which did prophesy. And as we tarried there many days, there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. And when he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle, bound his own hands and feet, and said, Thus says the Holy Ghost. So shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle and shall deliver him into the hand of the Gentiles. And when we heard these things, both we and they of that place besought him not to go up to Jerusalem. Now, now get that. See, here's the same ones that you saw. They said they had this impression of, you know what? Don't go to Jerusalem. Even after the, a prophet comes and speaks to him about going to Jerusalem, they even say, we heard these things, both we and they of that place besought him not to go up. Then Paul answered, what mean you to weep and to break mine heart? For I'm ready not to be bound only, but also die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. And when he would not be persuaded, we cease saying, the will of the Lord be done. You see, they had an impression about, you know what, it's not a good thing for him to go to Jerusalem. But it wasn't up to them to tell them what Paul was to do and what not to do. It was just this impression. You know what, there's, there's, some, there's some things ahead. And when the prophet came, the Holy Ghost said. See, there's two aspects that God deals with us. One is the impression. But it's not for, up to us to add to the impression. And the second thing is he speaks to us. He speaks to us. Say, he speaks to me. Speaks to me. Hallelujah. My sheep hear my voice. Amen. We have to learn to follow the impressions. You know what? And the impressions may not always be straight before you. They may not always be convenient. They may not always be looking smooth. <laughs> Thank you, Father. The Holy Spirit wants to direct us, wants to speak to us. Hallelujah. Let's go to Acts 13. Oh, it's already 8 o'clock. Wow. Hallelujah. So I wanted to just set that up for you because you understand how God directs us. It's not all, it's, he, it's impressions. Amen. And, it's, and he speaks to us. So how do we put ourselves in position to receive the right impressions and to hear him speak to us, to direct us? Because that's just, it's not, you, it, you don't have to get God to speak to you. He wants to speak to you. You know, in, in Revelations chapter 2 and chapter 3, it says, and, the Holy, and, and, and God said, and God said this, and God said that. If you have ears to hear. Let him hear. If you have ears to hear, let him hear. If you have ears to hear, let him hear. He wants to speak to you. He is not you trying to get God to speak to you. Don't try, don't try to hear a voice. Don't try to hear. No, God wants to settle that in your heart. He wants to direct your life. Why? Because you're his sheep and he is the shepherd. He wants to direct your life. Settle that. And he's going to direct you by impressions and he's going to direct you by his voice. He's going to direct you by his word. If you hear a voice that's outside of this word, you're not hearing the right voice. And he'll speak to you through his word. He'll speak to you through preaching. He'll speak to you in a still small voice. He'll speak to you. He wants to speak to you. I just keep that in mind. He wants to speak to you. It's not trying to get God to speak to you. He wants to speak to you. 
The thing we have to get to is how do we get in position? You know, a phrase that we're using Sunday morning as we started this past Sunday is making room. Making room. Making room. Hallelujah. A lot of times we don't get impressions or hear because we're not making room. We're, uh, we, our lives and our heart are filled with so many other things. Hallelujah. So we have to get to a place where we make room so we can receive impressions and we can hear. Amen. Acts chapter 13, verse 1. Now in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers... Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Menaean, a member of the court of Herod the Tatriarch, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Separate now for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I've called them. Then after fasting and praying, they put their hands on them and sent them away. Now get this. While they were worshiping the Lord... While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said. You see, fasting and worship puts you in a position to hear. You know, people say, well, you know, I'm under grace now. We know there's no fasting now in the New Testament. Get behind me. I've heard people say, you know, we have grace and we, we have that. And, but if that was so, how come, how come the, Paul lived a fasted lifestyle? How come the early church was built upon a life of fasting and worship? You know, now, you have to understand this. Fasting is not earning points with God to get him to speak to you. Fasting and worship is about putting your heart your heart into a position to receive what he has for you is to cause you to be wide open. But see, your heart, our heart, it can be filled with so much junk, so much confusion, so much busyness, so much thing. That's why fasting and worship is so important because it pulls you away from the busyness of what's going on to bring you a place where, where you can focus on him. Hallelujah. As they worshiped and as they, as they fasted, the Holy Spirit said. You know, I, Lord, Lord said this to me, you know, asked me a question. He goes, Justin, how many things do you think I want to speak to you, but yet you don't let me? Now think about it. Justin, how, how many things do you think I want to share with you? But I can't because you won't let me. Oh, man. Wow. Because you, you have a better way or you did it that way last time. So maybe it's the way to do it this time. So we, we, have, to, we have to put ourselves in this position. Hallelujah. Let's go to uh, Samuel. First Samuel chapter 3. Thank you, Father. 1 Samuel chapter 3. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Verse 1 says, Now the boy Samuel. Now the boy Samuel. Boy didn't say the prophet Samuel at this time. He said the boy. Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli. Samuel ministered before the Lord. The word ministered here is to worship. It means to, it means to attend to. It means to serve. So as, as Samuel is attending unto the Lord, as Samuel is serving the Lord as Samuel is worshiping the Lord before Eli. Then it says, the word of the Lord was rare and precious in those days and there was no frequent or widespread vision. Why? The word was rare, not because God didn't want to speak. The word was rare because no one had open hearts. No one had open hearts. 
It wasn't that God didn't want to speak. It, the thing is, who is he going to speak to? Because he couldn't even speak to Eli anymore because of what Eli allowed his sons to be doing in the temple. He'd become old, he'd become blind, and he, he, didn't, he didn't train someone else necessarily to take his place and, and because they weren't living godly. So, so really, and the only way that the world, the, the, the people in that land, the Israelites were going to hear was going to come through the prophet and come through the priest. But yet the word was rare and there was no open vision. Why? God, open vision. God couldn't show the prophet anything because his heart wasn't open to anything. And the thing is, is God can't show you next steps. God can't give you direction if your heart isn't open to receive it. And so here, here Samuel is, is ministering to the Lord. But let's look, what, what happened as a result of it? Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Verse 4. When the Lord called Samuel... And he answered, here I am. You see, when you worship, minister to the Lord, it puts you in a position for him to speak to you. So even though Samuel didn't really know what he was doing, because if you look at verse 7, it said he did not yet know the Lord. Even though he didn't exactly know what he was doing, his worship caused a response for God to speak. When the Lord called Samuel and he said, here I am. See, he knows your name. He knew Samuel's name. He ran to Eli and said, here I am. For you called me, Eli. Said, I did not call you. Lie down again. So he went and he laid down. And the Lord called again, Samuel. And Samuel rose and went to Eli and said, here I am. You did call me, Eli answered. I did not call you, my son. Lie down. Now Samuel did not know the Lord. And the Lord was not yet, and the word of the Lord was not yet revealed to him. He did not net yet know the Lord. He, he didn't understand how the Lord operated. He didn't now know how, this was all new to him. He didn't know how God would show up. He didn't know, uh, he didn't know about the word of the Lord yet. He, the, <clears throat> this was all new. All he knows to do is worship. Verse 9, so Eli said to Samuel, go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and he laid down in his place and the Lord came and stood and called as at the other time, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say that. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Another word for servant you could say here is a worshiper. Speak, Lord. Your worshiper is listening. Well, he wants to speak, but, but the catalyst for God to speak had nothing to do with Eli. It had everything to do with Samuel ministering before the Lord. And when you minister to before the Lord, it will always cause God to speak into your life. Yes. Hallelujah. Ha hearing God comes down to speak, Lord. I'm your servant and I'm listening. Let that be a daily prayer of your life. Speak, Lord. Your servant's listening. But before you go to bed, just whisper to yourself, speak, Lord. I'm listening. When you wake up in the morning, speak, Lord. I'm listening. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Go to Acts 9 and I'll close with this. Well, maybe not. Hold on. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Speak, Lord. Some phrase I, I want to deposit in your heart, and I believe this is a great phrase to, to latch hold of, especially the, our first service in 2018. And it's a phrase, quality time. Hearing from him, receiving from him is birthed out of quality time. Jesus only did the things he saw his father do, say what he heard his father say, 
based because of quality time. Quality time. Let quality time with God mark your 2018. Quality time. Word time is quality time. Worship time is quality time. Prayer time is... Make room. Make room for quality time. Make room for quality time. Acts 9. Uh, Yeah, Acts 9. Verse verse 1 says, Meanwhile, Saul, still drawing his breath hard from threatening and murderous desire against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and he requested of him letters to the synagogue of Damascus, authorizing him so that if he had found any man or woman belonging to the way of Christ, he might bring them bound with chains to Jerusalem. Now as he traveled on, he came near to Damascus and suddenly a light from heaven flashed about him and he fell to the earth and he heard a voice, he heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? See, now most of the, most of the time when, when I always read this, I looked at it from a standpoint that God was showing up in his life <clears throat> to correct him and that's true. But also understand Paul's heart was sincere. Paul, Paul in, in his heart, wasn't necessarily thinking that he was a murderer. He thought he was doing God's work. He thought he was doing God's business. You know, he was a, he was a Hebrew of the he- Hebrews. He was a Pharisee of the Pharisees, counting the law. He was perfect. He sacrificed when he needed to sacrifice. He prayed when he needed to pray. He prayed looking and doing the right things. He, he did everything he needed to do because, I mean, he was schooled by Gamaliel. He was, he was the, I mean, he was at the feet of the greatest rabbis. You, Paul, if you talk about being a worshiper, he was a worshiper. He had his quality time with God. He knew the word. He knew the Torah backwards and forwards. He he knew every jot, every tittle. He knew everything about the word of God. You see, even though he was wrong, his worship brought him face to face with the Savior. His devotion to God brought him face to face with the Savior. He knew his name, Saul, Saul. When God shows up, he speaks your name. Samuel, Samuel. Saul, Saul. (laughs) About (laughs) Jesus, my son in whom I'm well pleased. He, He calls you by your name. And I I believe God showed up, yes, to correct Paul's thing, but I believe it was birthed out of his heart as a worshiper. So much so, God, I just want to be used by you. God, I just want to be used by you. I just want this aspect of of the Messiah that's going to come. I want to be the one that's going to usher the Messiah. And I believe Jesus saying, hey, I, I was him. And why are you kicking against the pricks? Why are you coming against what I'm trying to establish? And all of a sudden, Paul was awakened to his error. He was awakened to his mistakes. But how did it come? God spoke to him out of a heart of devotion. His heart wasn't to be a murderer necessarily. It wasn't his heart to, it was just, he thought he was doing the right thing. Now, I know some people may disagree with me on, on my understanding of this. But I believe, I believe it shows that why did Jesus show up on the road to Damascus? It was because he says, I see a heart. I see a heart. Bible says he looks throughout the whole earth looking for someone's heart that is, that is devoted to him. Just desiring him. And God saw his heart. You know, he had a devoted heart, but Paul, you're you're not living right. This isn't how I do things. This is not how I, this is not how you go about doing it. Hallelujah. Verse 10. Thank you for letting me take time to teach this. In verse 10, 
we see another person. And there was a certain disciple of Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision. Ananias. And he said, behold, I am here, Lord. Sounds like Samuel to me. Ananias. Ananias. Called his name Ananias. And what did Ananias say? I'm your servant. Speak, Lord. I am your servant. I am your worshiper. You see, God just didn't show up at Ananias' house and, and wake Ananias up and say, you know, it's time to get up, Ananias. You know, I want to show you a vision. He didn't get Ananias to, to turn off the latest chariot races that were on on TV and, and, and say, come on, I need to speak to you, Ananias. Because, you know, there's a guy, you know, his name's Paul. You know, there's a, no, no, it, he showed him in a vision. But it was a response to Ananias' life of worship. We want God to speak to us and direct us. But is our heart turned towards him? A hearing ear is produced out of an open heart. A hearing ear is produced out of an open heart. Let me say it again. A hearing ear is produced out of an open heart. Verse 10, that last part of verse 10. Ananias, he said, behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said to him, arise, go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judah, Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he prayeth. And has seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hands on him that he might receive his sight. So we we know Ananias shows up where Paul is. But what is Paul doing when, what is Paul doing when Ananias shows up? He is praying. Paul has an open heart and it opens up for a hearing ear for Ananias now to come in and to speak God's word directly to Paul. You see how this all works together. Hallelujah. Look at Acts 22, and I'll, I'll close with this. Acts 22, because I want you to see this. It's important. So Paul is giving a history of what happened. Verse 11, it says, And when I could not see... I'm sorry, Acts 22, verse 11. And when I could not see for the glory of that light, being led by the hand of them that were with me, I came into Damascus. And one Ananias, here it says, a devout man, according to the law, having a good report of all the Jews which dwelt there, came unto me, stood and said to me, Brother Saul, receive thy sight. In the same hour, I looked up upon him. And he said, the God of our forefathers has chosen thee, that thou should know his will and see that just one and shouldest hear the voice of his mouth. For thou shalt be his witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. So what did Ananias do? It said he was a devout man. Devotion. Devoted. A worshiper. And so it was out of that that God was able to speak to Ananias to where Ananias could go then and speak to another worshiper. You see, see, we need to become worshipers that hear because maybe you have something that someone else needs to hear. Maybe there's an impression. Maybe there's a prophetic word. There's something maybe... Someone in your path as you're going about your life needs to hear. But they're not going to hear it if you don't hear it first. So that's why it's so important for us to have quality time so we can hear. Hear so we then speak. And it's amazing to me that how Paul heard and Ananias heard. Ananias went to Paul to hear, to go reach an entire people group known as the Gentiles. What you hear from heaven is never insignificant. 
And what you hear from heaven is not always about you. Father, I thank you for your word tonight. I thank you for your word tonight. I thank you for your word tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you that we are your sheep. You are our shepherd and we hear your voice. Everyone stand to your feet. Oh, Rabba Shokote Rabba Sokote Rabbiah. Oh, Rabba Baba Kasokote Rabbiah. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Broshta la Rabba Kosokot Rabbiah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. That heritage of faith is full. Heritage of faith is a church full of worshipers. Heritage of faith is full of devoted worshipers. Heritage of faith is full of men and women that minister unto the Lord. And because of that, heritage of faith is full of people that hear your voice. Oh, hallelujah. 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 We are your servants. Speak, Lord. We are your servants. Speak, speak to us all day long. Speak to us when we wake up. Speak to us when we lay our head down at night. Speak to us with visions and dreams. Speak to us, Father. Hallelujah. Direct our path. Direct our life. Hallelujah. Into the ways that you have for us. Hallelujah, the way that you directed Paul, the way that you directed Ananias, the way that you directed Peter. Hallelujah, the way that you directed the early church, the way that you directed Silas. I thank you that you're directing us. Hallelujah, we have ears to hear. Hallelujah, and eyes to see and a heart to understand what the Spirit of God is saying and what the Spirit of God is doing. Hallelujah. We as a church are always in the right place at the right time, speaking the right things, doing the right things. Hallelujah. Because we are led by your spirit. We live from the inside out. Hallelujah. We are spirit led. We are not head led. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It may not seem like it, but I'm prophesying. Hallelujah. Lay hold of it. Lay hold of it. Hallelujah. That you're spirit led and not head led. You're spirit led and not emotion led. You are spirit led. Hallelujah. You follow the voice of the good shepherd and a stranger's voice you don't follow. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, I draw you into quality time. I draw you into quality time. I draw you in to quality time. And it's out of that quality time you will hear. And it's out of what you hear you will respond. And it's out of the way that you respond, you'll walk in a way like no other. You'll live in a way like no other. You'll speak in a way like no other. Quality time. Quality time. I want time with you. I want time with you. Set aside time. Set aside time to meditate. Set aside time to think and dwell upon my word. Set aside time to worship. Set aside time to get your heart quiet, your heart open. And I will speak. I will speak. I will speak. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. 
Oh. Mm. Say, speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Your servant hears. Speak, Lord. Your servant hears. Thank you, Father. Mm. Hallelujah. Korra bakateridi isho korra maya. Thank you, Father. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Ask yourself what quality time looks like. Ask yourself, what does quality time look like? Ask the Lord, what does quality time look like? Let him shape your quality time. If you hear something, write it down. In your prayer time, always have something to write with. Thank you for your peace. And his presence is so real. Mm. Sense in my heart this, I keep hearing this, I see big, big things. I see big, big things. Do you have anything, hon? Hallelujah. Hmm. Hallelujah. Mm. Uh. 
It's the higher way of living. Higher way of living. Higher way of living. Not going back anymore. There's a higher way of living. I don't want to interrupt what, I know that God's just ministering to some hearts and I don't want to interrupt that, but I have a, I have a release. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hmm. Thank you, Father. Speak, Lord, your servant hears. If you want to stay in this attitude, you can. As God continues to minister to you, but I just don't want to like... So you're dismissed if you, if you want to go ahead and leave. See you on Sunday morning.